All right. Now we are going to look at one of the biggest movements, first movements so far in the Beethoven Sonata literature, and that is the Opus 53 Sonata, which was dedicated to Count Waldstein. So this one's known as the Waldstein Sonata. And it is a little over 300 measures long and has some surprises that uh, we'll get into here in a moment. But what I want to do first is just direct your attention to the very end of the movement. Um, and that is measure 290. And at this point, he's working with the B theme. So we're going to identify this as, as the B theme when we get to this point here at measure 35. Um, and as this B theme is, is discussed, we get to this passage. And I'm going to play just, you know, read through it right there. So you have... Now he has, that was an A natural there in measure 290. He presents it an octave lower, A flat. And then one more octave lower, and you hear A natural again. And then, And brings it to a real brilliant conclusion. So, why does Beethoven give you this A flat right here? It seems kind of arbitrary. You know, you hear it as A natural, which is the diatonic pitch. Then he gives you an A flat when it's an octave lower, but then back to A natural here. Okay, so that's one question that I want you to think about, and we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, this is, this is a movement which you can't really go to the end of the exposition. Okay, clearly you see it marked with double bars and repeats there on the fourth page. But um, this, you know, ends in C major and that's the key of the piece. So you're thinking, well, wait a minute, that can't be right. You know, can't have, you know, C major for A and then C major for B. But we'll see what happens here in the beginning of this. And I'm going to play through the exposition, then we'll stop it, and then we'll talk through all of the thematic ideas. But I want to point out a couple of places here. So it starts out with this opening theme that's repeated notes. And this is going to be an important motive, this repeated... Uh, so he has that in measure three. So that's the second idea, is this which emerges from the repeated notes. So that's uh, like an A2 idea. And then what you're going to hear in the bass at the beginning you hear all these C's, then it goes down to a B natural for the five chord. Still B natural. Then it goes to a B flat. And so we're down to a B flat here, B flat major, to an A, to an A flat, to a G. So the opening passage features this chromatically descending bass line with these two motives. That's an, this is an A1, that's an A2, and that's part of the A2 idea. All right. Then we reach this cadence point, and you have C, G, E flat, A, G. So it clearly outlines C minor. And then immediately, it goes back to C major there. And he just 
presents this again now just uh, filling out the rhythm with continuous alternating 16th notes. So it's the same basic idea there. Now it goes up to D minor and it starts to modulate and then um, when we get to here then we've gotten to a new key area and then from there it's going to lead to this B theme. Okay, so I'm going to let you listen to it here and then we'll talk through some more and then hear the uh, repeat of it. So um, let me get this queued up. This I actually can do this very fast. All right, so. statement of the eighth thing. So that's the repeat. All right. So we kind of talked through the beginning of this already. Once you get to this spot, then this is where it is changing keys. And you had this, I'm going to play it slower. I can't play that fast. <laughs> so forth. Okay, so right here at uh, measure 23, this has shifted toward E minor and it's setting up the key of E minor. So it starts with a 5 chord to a 1 chord there to E minor. 5-7 
through here, it's setting up E minor. But then when we get to the arrival point, then he shifts with G sharps to E major. And then we have that B theme that is presented in E major. Then he presents it an octave lower and so forth. All right, so this transition section then, so that's the transition, sets up E minor, but then at the arrival point, shifts to G sharps and E major. So the theme is presented, um, four measures, and then we have another four measures here, and it cadences on E major. Then you have a scale on the right hand, and then, as we heard the first time, I pointed out that the theme shifts then to the left hand. What happens against that is a decoration of the theme in the right hand. So, um, basically, you are just um, going to decorate this. Uh, let's see if I can get these notes here. Page. Let's see. Uh, so, and so, at any rate, the way that this um, is set is an example of heterophony. H e t e r o p h o n y. Heterophony. And that is a type of texture in which you have a melody that is presented against an embellished version of itself. So pay attention to that. That's a term that I could ask you to d define and how that applies then in this particular movement. So when he restates the theme in the left hand, then he gives you an embellished version in the soprano voice in the right hand. And this leads then to this second idea, which is going to just take uh, that I did. And it's just going to basically be uh, tonic and dominant in the key of E major with this syn syncopated uh, dominant pitch. He reverses the hand, so now this is down there, this is up here. Then both hands present the triplets. Here's a place where Beethoven uses that foreshortening technique where he has started out with two measure units. So that's two, that's two, um, that's two. And then here's a one measure. So you hear the um, E. So here's the one measure idea, one measure idea, half measure. Half measure, then one beat, yum, bum, beep, bop, beep, bop, beep, bop, beep, and then that's the end of that four shortening passage. This is all leading up then to this arrival point on E major. When we get to E major, then what he's going to do is that um, he has this. Uh, So, the cadence on E major. Now, he shifts then to a 5 of 4, and it goes to A minor, bar of 4. There is a 2 6, 1 6 4. So he goes at this point to E minor. So he's gone from setting up this B theme in E major. He uses this whole passage here in E minor to set it up, but then at the last minute he changes to E major. He has this thematic develop, you know, discussion and you know a couple of ideas here. When we get to this point, this is the closing theme 
here at measure 74, but he is going to return then to E minor, and there's your cadence on E minor right there. He has the same thing then, an octave lower, same passage here, so that's the same, that's the same, and then he's going to sequence that two measure idea, and he's going to take it down um, a couple of keys, and he makes his way back to C major. So it gets from E major to C major by way of E minor, and um, it has some deceptive, you know, cadences in here. At that point, um, you're going to hear this one six four in E minor to a five, and then he goes to C major right there. That's a deceptive cadence, and then he has that same uh, material in C major. And when he gets to the second ending, then he's going to take it down one more fifth. And he's going to go from C major then to F, and that cadence is then on the key of F, which is subdominant, and then you start the development section. So it has a little connecting passage right there. So at measure 90, then it starts the development, and you can see that he's going to develop the A theme at the beginning of development. So let's go back and listen to the exposition again, and just pay attention to the way that he shifts back and forth between. C major, oh, and then and here he's got the A flat, here he's got E flat, so now that's making it sound like C minor, and there you've got that arpeggiation of the C minor triad, fermata on the dominant pitch, so he's, he's shifted to C minor by the end of this opening passage, and then back to C major right here, and then embellishes this. E minor, E major, E major, all this is E major, B theme area, cadence on E major, oh, back to E minor, so in the closing, E minor, C major, F major, and then there we are. Okay, so those are the overall keys of this, and let's listen to the repeat the exposition. starts with that A theme. 
then it's going to go through several keys, okay? And it's developing the A theme through all of this. This is all based on 